Okay, so we are going to learn how to make ghee. Now, making ghee is tricky um, because there are a lot of ways that it can go wrong. Um, and I have tried to write those down in my little ghee recipe, and I want to show you. But one of the things that's trickiest, the trickiest thing is making a small quantity of ghee. So, um, as I said, I was an ashram cook once. I used to take 68 pound blocks of butter and make one or two of those into ghee. And that was a lot easier than this, because all you have to do is put it in a really big pot and stir it and not let it stick. And it's very easy to see exactly when it's done and turn off the flame. The biggest problem in making ghee is cooking the butter too much. So, our raw ingredients, butter. Um, preferably unsalted butter. You can make ghee from salted butter. It's better to use unsalted butter, okay? You can use organic butter. You can use cultured butter. You can use other types of butter that are now available. So. For making ghee in a small quantity, I would strongly recommend don't use less than, even if you're not going to use it all right away, don't use less than two pounds of butter. So start with two pounds of butter, that's eight sticks of butter, and unsalted butter, and you're going to put it in a saucepan like this. Okay, so now we can get a close up there. So I'm using a very small saucepan. Um, the small surface area is going to allow this to cook more quickly. What happens when we make ghee? We take the butter and we cook it. In the process of cooking the butter, butter has milk fat, it has milk fat, it also has water, and it has some other milk solids in it. So in cooking the ghee, now I need to turn this flame down a little bit. This is too high. So. Remember I said that the measure of a good stove is the ability to have a low flame. This is when you really need that low flame. I want the lowest possible flame I can get. And I've got a nice low flame here. Okay, so this is where it's really worthwhile to have a good stove, a good cooktop. So, um, we just need one other tool here. We're going to use a regular spoon to scoop off the solids as they come up. So I'm going to use this. I'm going to use this to stir. So as we are cooking the butter, so now take a, take a look and, and see how we've got this foam coming up. So you see now you see how the butter is melted and you've got this foamy stuff and you've got this kind of clear yellow liquid underneath. That clear yellow liquid is the ghee with a little bit of water mixed in. And what we're going to end up with is going to be that yellow liquid and we're going to get rid of what's the foamy stuff. The foamy stuff is mostly those um, milk solids. And in the case of salted butter, um, that's going to also be where the salt is. So the ghee that we end up with is going to be pure oil. It's, it's the essence of, of the butter, essence of the, of the milk. So now I'm just going to grab a little metal spoon and I'm going to use a paper plate for this. Okay. So this is perfect. This long handled teaspoon is perfect for skimming that foam off the ghee. So you see this. We are going to, as this cooks, I am going to use this to skim off that foam. Okay. Now this stuff that we're taking off, you can actually use it. You can put it in a bread dough, you can add it to a soup. Um, you can put it in with vegetables or whatever, um, which, you know, if, and if you're a vata, that's probably not a bad idea if you're not really con too concerned about your weight. 
Gi is something that you can use sparingly, and it adds a lot of life to things. You know, Gi is not something to avoid. Gi is not bad. It is something to use in moderation. And these solids, um, there's, there's some butter in these also. There's some uh, ghee in the solids also. And um, so, we, you know, we could, we could make use of those. So I'm going to skim these off. I actually might have gotten it a little too hot to start with. If you see, there's... Um, so we have we have this foamy stuff, and as it cooks, with such a small quantity of butter, this is just cooking phenomenally fast, even though you don't see a lot of activity. And we want to get these this foamy stuff off as quickly as we can, as quickly as it comes up, and as quickly as we can separate it. And you notice I'm just going very slowly, and I'm just trying to scoop the foam off and not take that precious ghee out more than I have to. And what we have left there is actually mostly ghee. So we've got it on that very, very slow flame. Let's stir this and make sure that we don't have anything sticking there. So you see what we already have here, this is about, um, can everyone see now how, how clear it is in the way there? So that's about, we're about 85% of the way to having ghee. If you were not really, if you were not concerned about keeping this for a long time, you could actually use this almost. You could strain this out, you could take that foam off the top, you could use this in cooking straight away. Um, the, the, the ideal goal, so this is ghee that I made last night. Uh, I, I started out with two pounds of unsalted butter and I cooked it very slowly. I used a slightly larger skillet than this. One thing to remember, when you first start cooking the butter, when the butter comes to a boil, it foams up. When you have a 68 pound block of butter in a big pot on a big candy stove and it does that, it can be a little scary because this the, the ghee and we're ready to strain it so I'm going to uh, again it's it's very viscous so it wants to I'm going to try to tip it in quickly and that's going to filter in um, we want to do it while it's still hot otherwise it just wouldn't really go at all let me get more of this into the jar And that's it. So we're going to let that sit and sort of drip in and strain through. And hopefully it's not going out. Let's just make sure that's... 